Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motide Media, and it is the 10-year anniversary of Porter Robinson's Worlds album, one of my favorite albums of all time, if not one of the greatest electronic slash EDM dance music albums of all time. It is crazy good, it's my favorite Porter Robinson record, and Porter has decided to celebrate the 10-year anniversary by releasing a new track, a sort of unreleased one that he said he released late, called Hollow Heart, which features features Amy Milan, I should say, uh, who was the voice of Divin Divinity, um, the first single of Worlds. But uh, yes, uh, this is supposedly an interlude of sorts. This isn't some big, he said, it's, I think he said it's drumless in some capacity, but like this isn't this big crashing song. This is supposedly a more somber, more, uh, yeah, intimate interlude style track. But uh, let's see what we really think about this track when it's, uh, what it sounds like. So here we go, we'll hop into this. And then after I'll give a little uh, retrospective on uh, Worlds holistically and we'll talk about the world's album holy but uh yeah here we go this is hollow heart This is beautiful. Damn, hollow heart. This is so good. This is so great. I love World's Era of Porter. Uh, this is magical. Like, it feels magical. I love Amy's vocals on this and how, like, differently it is processed comparatively to Divinity, um, giving it a little bit more of a softer palette to it. Um, and uh, yeah, just providing a real like lots of space on this on this track. There's uh, Worlds has these he's, these tracks that are these long like very grandioso like big wild movements, and um, I think this would have slotted in really well into uh, the track list in, in any spot really. I was trying to look at the album list and see where like huh where would I have put this? I think I probably would have put it after like Fresh Static Snow or right before Fresh Static Snow. I feel like that's a good um, like first third way point through to kind of put it into and slot it into the track list. Um, but yeah, it's just an absolutely beautiful track. I love the piano chords. I love the sound design. Um, I, I think this is... I, I I say all that, and I understand why this didn't make the cut of the record. He said it, he he put it in late, and my guess is because he didn't really know where he wanted to slot it or, or what to do with it necessarily, because... Um, 
like I said earlier, it, it doesn't really have that big grandiose feel, and it feels like a little bit more of a refrain that maybe in the larger context of things may lose some steam of the record, like of the runtime of you feel this pace and energy. Um, and I don't know if it really follows a ton of the line that uh, Porter's following all through the narrative, the narrative through line of the world coming to a chaotic World War III, uh, it's ending, and then there's this this um, this human and this AI kind of talking together. And... Um, <clears throat> There's there's bits of it here and here and there and, and I think the idea of the lyricism of necessarily talking about um, carving to the bridge of like I, I think it's the idea of like writing in you know how people like write stuff on the bridge like in like I don't even know what they do it in sticks or whatever or even like tagging in some capacity but um, writing in some like. Uh, heart thing or like this person plus this person a heart or just like some life mantra or something like that and the idea that believing uh, in that lie that they kind of talk about in the, in the course in the verse of of whatever you have written down in some capacity like things are going to get better and believing in that lie and um, that will be that will be have left behind after the world is coming to its end as worlds um, narratively follows that through line so uh, yeah I, I really liked it I, I, I do think though I like not having it in the album run if that makes sense it's it's a brilliant track that works really well in the greater context and narrative of the record but i think i'm sorry the other way around it's a great track but i don't think it necessarily fits in as easily to the greater context and narrative of the record um I, I think there's a lot going on here and i think it's it's really nice and serene and beautiful like i've said but i just yeah i just i i feel like this would be a an almost an unneeded uh, interlude of sorts. Um, that that is a, a point in the track list to break things up that I don't think needs breaking up. And because to me personally, Worlds is a ten out of ten album, and so uh, I don't think it needs this. Even though I do really really like the song as well. So uh, with that, I think let's do a little move here and talk about uh, like Worlds ten years in pr retrospective of sort of talk about um, all of that happened in the I, I'm not like to do a history of the last ten years, but in hindsight to really realize how pivotal this record was like how absolutely nuts this whole album was in the porter grand scheme of things like do i have the um yeah right here i have it out of its sleeve right now but like this individual album art this whole record here is is revolutionary like it the what it did for um, the EDM space, the indie space, the electronic space, dance space, like it changed the game. And I'm almost like sorry and apologetic that it didn't do it sooner. I think there was a definitely a, a point where it kind of hit a tipping point where people, where the album came out, were like, oh, this is fantastic. This is really good. And a lot of people really latched onto it right away. But I don't think there was an immediate love for it the same way that it has currently, this kind of um, legendary status that it has. Um, and I think a great example of that is actually Anthony Fantano, um, who reviewed the album originally and gave it a not so great score, but then went back a bunch of years later, I think even like two years ago, it was like that and been like actually i was like not necessarily wrong but like in retrospect realizing that this album was way better and bigger than uh, he originally gave it credit for and i think a lot of people did that as well and um even myself narratively where when the album first came out for the first bunch of years i'll i'll be honest i didn't really care about the narrative and or really pay attention to it much i kind of just loved the epic dance beats and Indietronica sound design and I was just all for the production side of things and didn't really care too much to listen to the lyrics or um, really think about what it was trying to say. Where now I look at it and go, wow, that was crazy what Porter managed to do on a debut album of making this sort of like a um, concept record of sorts where you're telling this kind of denser narrative that isn't so much is explicitly told. Um, and for those of you that don't know, this this narrative that Worlds follows is this kind of the world has come to a destructive end of sorts. The World War III has happened. We've dropped nukes. It's um, There's essentially just a, a human left, this one, I'm assuming like this boy here, and this AI girl. And it's the two of them, a lot of having this um, just conversation about life and talking about how things are and how things will be and coming to the uh, coming to terms with the end of things. And um, that is the ultimate conclusion of goodbye to a world, of the back and forth conversation of um, the, the boy saying goodbye to the AI and the AI is saying goodbye like it, it's it's over but I'm gonna be here for forever because I'm gonna live in this world um, this now digitized world of whatever I can get my hands on I guess or not even hands because it's an AI in some aspect but um, in my vision I see it as like just a computer program of sorts but um, 
yeah, it's just such a fascinating record that the more and more you dive into it, the more you get out of it. And I think um, there's a lot of new people, I'll say this, there's a lot of new people that have joined into the EDM space in the last 10 years specifically, as obviously things do and get more popular. But I think there's a lot of Porter fans in specific that haven't really gone back and really given a deeper appreciation for worlds. Um, and I think that's a common theme also because, um, I mean, like it's, it's hard to go back in any aspect and go like, oh, I need to listen to this. And it's hard to like, be like, oh, I wasn't around when this came out. And I don't know what the discourse was online. I don't know. So you have to do like a lot of your individual research. And I think it's similar to see like a Daft Punk homework where, um, we go back and listen to that now and we're their first record be like, eh, like it's, it's kind of boring. It's not that like crazy. Like the sounds are fun, but it's a very repetitive. And like, it's, it's like kind of like good Daft Punk, but not realizing that that was so revolutionary for the time. Uh, and I and I think we have come to terms with that for Worlds now where we've gone, no, this is this is incredible. Um, this this is truly one of the greatest um, electronic slash dance slash indie tronica albums of um, ever, uh, of ever. I, th I think the ability for in a soundscape and in a musical landscape where uh, there was so much of this complexro dubstep and Porter even did Spitfire and this like crazy abrasive music to then turn that and make it a lot more beautiful and say, hey, no, this can sound really serene and add a very um, specifically indie element to electronic production and really became the pioneer of this kind of indie tronica sound um, that has inspired so many people today. Um, I, I think of like, when I think of the big two artists that are the real biggest inspirations for people, um, nowadays in the modern musical landscape, um, it's got to be uh, Daft Punk and it's got to be Porter Robinson. Um, and now that Daft Punk has retired, I think they're seen more so as old guard. I mean, if we're going old school, it's cool to talk about Kraftwerk and then Daft Punk and then Porter Robinson. But um, so many modern producers nowadays, because uh, Porter is still producing, um, go that, no, Porter is my biggest inspiration. He is the one that I look up to. And Porter has taken that um, that sense of that that like identity in stride and he's really uh like embraced it uh, in his own and even wrote a whole album specifically um about writing worlds in nurture and then about his whole relationship with those fans on smile and so uh i'm just in love with the album holistically i think worlds is one of my favorite albums of all time if not number one i don't think it actually is but um I just, I love it. And this song is great. And this new track is great too, Hollow Heart. Uh, again, I think it works really well in uh, like sound design and in atmosphere of the record. But I do think it doesn't need to be in the record. I, I don't see a place where I feel like this needs to slot in to feel like it needs to go from something. Because I already think Worlds is a 10 out of 10 album. So, um, but yeah, that has been my kind of retrospective look back in at Worlds and a little quick reaction to Hollow Heart. But I'll let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Any and all thoughts would be great there. As uh, I'm Dakota from Bro Media and I'll see you guys in another video.